Okay, um, good day class. Um, today we are going to be talking about the series of structures that supply uh, electrical impulses, so to speak, to the lower limb. Uh, in our last class, we talked about the, the femur, and it's only uh, right if we talk about the muscular attachment to this femur. But then, if I'm going to be doing that, it means I'm going to be referring to more, uh, uh, nerve supply, their innovations, and to be unfair to refer you to something I have not uh, uh, talked about, even though I agree that all parts of anatomy are connected. So here we're going to be talking about the lumbosacral plexus. And just like in lower limb, the lumbosacral plexus is um, uh, made up of two groups. Okay, We have the lumbar plexus and we have the sacral plexus. Now the lumbosacral plexus is formed by the anterior rami of the spinal segment T12 to S4 to supply the lower limb. Okay. Now there are 59 muscles of the lower limb and the lumbar plexus actually innervates the anterior and the upper half of the lower limb. Why the sacral plexus innervates mainly uh, the lower part and the uh, uh, the posterior aspect. Now, let's talk about the lumbar plexus first. Okay, the, the lumbar plexus uh, the, is formed from the fibers of L1 to L4, as you can see uh, here, L1 to L4 here. Okay, uh, now these uh, muscles, the, these uh, nerves, they merge in the substance of the, of the soft major muscle to form the lumb, this uh, group of uh, nerves that I call the lumbar plexus. Now they innervate, like I said, the anterior aspect uh, and the upper part of the lower limb. Now we have different nerves here, so I'm going to be talking about it one after the other. The first nerve of the first branch or the first nerve of the lumbar plexus is the, uh, the iliohypogastric nerve. What some people will call the what some people will call, let me just do it this way so we won't have too much red pain. What some people will call the iliopubic nerve. So the iliohypogastric nerve is the first branch that originates from the L1 and sometimes, sometimes from the T12. It is actually inferior to the subcostal nerve. The subcostal nerve is the last nerve of the thoracic, uh, uh, from the, uh, the last thoracic nerve, okay? So this iliohypogastric nerve moves inferiorly towards the anterior aspect of the iliac crest, okay, of the iliac crest there, so towards the anterior aspect of the iliac uh, 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 crest, okay, so it, it gives two branches, it gives an anterior branch and it also gives a lateral cutaneous branch, okay, that supply over the inguinal region as well as the scrotum or the male or the labia majora in you. Now the, the lateral cutaneous nerve uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, the lateral cutaneous branch, sorry, supplies the superior lateral quadrant, the superior lateral quadrant of the putok, okay, uh, what some people will call the lateral aspect of the hip, okay, so it, it, it is this muscle that the iliohypogastric nerve is actually motor to the inguinal part of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscles. These two muscles are muscles of the anterolateral abdominal wall. Now, the second nerve that we are going to be talking about is the ilio inguinal nerve. Well, it does. It is, the, it is an identical brother to the ilio hypogastric nerve. So, this ilio inguinal nerve is from uh, the L1, and sometimes occasionally, uh, sometimes or occasionally from the T12. The same, uh, the same place, the same area the ilio hypogastric nerve is coming from. So, it runs. This one runs below the ilio hypogastric nerve. Okay, as you can see here, it runs below the hypogastric nerve, leans against the abdominal wall, and passes through it at a, you know, different spots. Then, at the level of the inguinal ligament, it runs literally at the level of the inguinal ligament and pass through the external inguinal ring to the pubic synthesis. Now, there's something called the external and the internal inguinal ring. We want, to be talk, we want to be talking about the, uh, the somatic cords, but let's not bore ourselves with that. Okay, so it passes through the external inguinal ring to the pubic synthesis, then to supply the scrotum or the labia majora. Okay, now this nerve, I'm talking about the inguinal nerve, it is also motor to the, uh, 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 to the inferior 
uh, parts of the transversus abdominis muscle and the internal oblique muscle. The same thing the hypogastric uh, nerve does. Then it has a femoral sensory branch that supply the upper and the inner parts of the anterior thigh. That's I'm talking about the medial part of the femoral triangle. I have mentioned the femoral triangle again. The femoral triangle is a triangle in the anterior portion of the thigh. We are going to be talking about it when we talk about the anterior compartment of uh, the compartments of uh, the thigh. Then it, the you know, inguinal uh, uh, nerve also gives a branch called the anterior scrotal nerve that supply the anterior part of the scrotum or the labia majora cervix uh, twice now. Then we have another nerve called the genitofemoral nerve. Actually, from the name genitofemoral nerve is actually from two uh, main nerves. The genital, it has two branches, or two components, the genital branch and the femoral uh, branch. Now, the genital, the genital, the, 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 um, the genitofemoral nerve is uh, 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 formed from uh, the L1 to L2, okay? Now, after it pierces the swast major muscle, okay, it uh, divided to the genital branch and, of course, the femoral branch. Now, the, the femoral branch is purely sensory, okay? It is purely sensory, purely cutaneous. That one passes through the vascular lacunae. I have mentioned the lacunae again. In the anterior part of the thigh, the, 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 the structure for the lacunae is divided into muscular lacunae and the sensory lacunae. The sensory lacunae, uh, um, the muscular lacunae is where muscles passes through, while we, the vascular lacunae uh, transmitted uh, vessels. Okay, so this, um, the, uh, the uh, purely sensory uh, uh, the femoral branch passes through the vascular uh, lacunae and supplies the skin uh, below the inguinal ligament, which is of course lateral to uh, uh, lateral part of the femoral triangle. Now, why the genital branch? Actually, the genital branch accompanies the somatic cord in male or the round ligament in female. Okay, uh, then it moves through the inguinal canal towards the scrotum or the labial majora in females. Then, which uh, it now supplies, uh, it, it also supplies sensory. This uh, uh, genital branch also is also sensory, uh, uh, it's also sensory to the medial aspect of the thigh. That's the reason why, okay, I will explain this later. Let me not go into it, okay? Then, the genital branch is motor to the cremasteric muscle. The cremasteric muscle is the muscle of the scrotum, which is responsible for drawing. Of uh, different uh, shapes of the uh, scrotum. There's another nerve called the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Why? What some people will call the lateral? Uh, uh, where is it again? Okay, this is it here. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, or what some people will call the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This nerve is from the L2 to L3, and guess what? It is purely sensory. It travels in laterally to the iliac fossa. The iliac fossa, you can see this is the nerve here. Let me clean this up. I have a lot of mess here. Okay, so this is it here. Okay, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Okay, so uh, 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 it, uh, it, um, it, it passes uh, in lateral to the iliac fossa. Uh, then, uh, of course, passes the swast major muscle. Then it is a content. Passes through the muscular lacunae, uh, then before it pierces the facial lacuna, where it supplies the lateral skin of the thigh, the peritoneum of the iliac fossa, the iliac fascia, and then and then also the uh, the lateral side of the thigh to the knee. Then it also you know it gain access to the thigh by passing deep to the inguinal uh, to the lateral portion of the inguinal ligament. So. It, it passes deep to the lateral portion. This is the inguinal ligament here. This is the inguinal ligament. This uh, structure, sorry. Uh, this structure here is the inguinal ligament. So this uh, genitofemoral nerve passes deep to the lateral portion of this uh, inguinal uh, ligament. Then there's another nerve that we might not be able to see here. Okay, I don't know if the labeling, okay, yes, I think the labeling is here. This nerve here, okay, let me, let me push this image somewhere here okay good good 
Okay, now this uh, nerve here is called the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve is formed from the L2 to L4 uh, at the level of the iliosacral joint. What I mean by the iliosacral joint, look at this nerve here. Look at this nerve here coming from here. So the joint here together, okay, at the level of the iliosacral joint. What I mean by the iliosacral joint is it is a joint between the ilium and the sacrum around the here. So this is where the L2 to L4 nerve fibers unite, okay. And of course, this happens medial to the swast major uh, before it passes along the posterior wall of the pelvic cavity. Then, at the point of uh, uh, bifurcation of the common iliac vessel, you know, the common iliac vessel is supposed to be common iliac artery here, then move to the, uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, common uh, external, uh, in external iliac artery, where it moves here, then divide it to internal iliac artery and the external iliac artery, the same thing happened here. So, uh, just uh, uh, the point of application of the common iliac nerve vessel, uh, the obturator nerve uh, travels towards the obturator foramen where it now supplies the pelvic uh, parietal uh, peritoneum. Now, if you, if, you, if, you, if you can see this, this nerve is actually coming out from the uh, obturator foramen and you know the obturator foramen is supposed to be covered by the uh, obturator membrane, isn't it? So now, once this nerve is out of the foramen, it divides into two. Once this nerve is out of this foramen, it divides into two. It divides into an anterior portion and also a posterior portion. Now, the anterior portion is mortal to the adductor brevis, adductor longus, and gracilis. And sometimes, 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 sometimes the anterior division of the obturator nerve also supplies the pectineus muscle. That sometimes. Then it gives articular branch to the hip joint. Okay, all these muscles I've mentioned are muscles of the media compartment of the thigh, which we are going to be talking about in our next class. Now, the, 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 the posterior division of the obturator nerve is actually mortal to the obturator externus, that's the muscle covering the, uh, the, the obturator foramen. And of course, it's also, it's also mortal to the adductor magnus. Uh, then it gives an articular branch to the knee joint. So we can say, it is safe to say that the anterior uh, division of the obturator nerve supplies the uh, hip joint while the posterior division supplies the uh, uh, knee joint. Now, if you remember, I said that sometimes the anterior division of the obturator foramen actually supplies the pectineus muscle. But sometimes the, the, there's a nerve called the accessory obturator nerve. It is not here in this table, okay? The accessory obturator nerve, uh, it's also formed from fibers of the anterior division of L3 uh, to L4 and they also make at the same point as the, uh, the obturator nerve, that's the uh, iliosacral joint. But the only difference now is that once the, if the accessory <coughs> obturator nerve is present, it's going, actually going to be lateral to the obturator nerve, okay? Uh, so this uh, obturator nerve will be, the, the, this accessory obturator nerve will be the one to supply uh, the pectineus. Okay, so that's why I said the anterior division of the obturator nerve sometimes supplies the pectineus. Now, there's another nerve which is very important. Well, all nerves are important, but uh, maybe the reason why I said this nerve is important is because um, it's uh, the largest, well, not the largest in the body. <laughs> the sciatic nerve has that called. Okay, so it's the largest in the lumbar plexus, and you know the sciatic nerve is actually from the sacral plexus. Okay, so the femoral nerve is actually the largest. This nerve here, this nerve here, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. This nerve here. Okay, so the femoral nerve is uh, actually uh, from the from uh, uh, the posterior division of L2 uh, to L4. What it does is that it gives two cutaneous branches to the iliosuous muscle. You know the iliosuous muscle, the, e, 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 um, the suas major muscle is from here, then iliacus is from here. So the 
the muscles of the iliac muscle joins together with the swass major muscle to form the iliosuas muscle. Okay, so the femoral nerve gives two branches, two cutaneous branches to the iliosuas muscle. And then uh, once the nerve continues, it gives another branch to the pectinus. That means it supplies the pectinus. It gives other branches, but first of all, it will give two cutaneous branches to the iliosuas major muscle. Then uh, uh, it supplies the pectinus. Then once it goes inferiorly, as you can see, once it goes inferiorly to inferior, when it goes inferior to the inguinal ligament, it now gives different uh, nerves that I'm going to be mentioning uh, uh, right now. Uh, it gives uh, uh, two. It gives, of course, I've already said it, it supplies the, the, the pectinus. It gives uh, two uh, nerves to the rectus femoris. One, of course, which will innervate the hip. It gives one nerve to the vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and vastus medius. These muscles are muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh, which we are going to be talking about in the next slide. Then it also gives two nerves to the sartorius muscles, one of which will become the intermediate femoral cutaneous nerve. And then we also have the medial femoral cutaneous nerve. Then it gives, it has a terminal branch called the saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve is not shown here because it's actually a nerve of the leg. Okay, the saphenous nerve is, is, is the sensory terminal branch of the femoral nerve. So it, it moves along the femoral artery, uh, uh, it, it moves together with the femoral artery and vein, then into the adductor canal. We are going to be talking about the adductor canal when we talk about the adductor uh, uh, compartment of the thigh. Then it finally uh, accompanies the great saphenous vein to the medial side of the lower leg before it becomes cutaneous to the skin of the anterior medial part of the knee, over the medial malleolus, and all the way down to the uh, first uh, and second metatarsal. No, the first metatarsal actually, the first uh, metatarsal. Now, those are the, the names of the lumbar plexus. Then coming to the sacral plexus, we are not going to be talking much about it because we've done justice to the sacral plexus. Yes, we, we talked about uh, the, the superior gluteal nerve, uh, we talked about the inferior gluteal nerve, we talked about the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. When we were talking about the gluteal region, we spoke about this nerve. So these are nerves from the sacral plexus. But the nerve that we are not going to shy away from, which is also a branch of uh, the sciatic of the uh, of the sacral plexus is the uh, the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is an important uh, structure uh, of the uh, uh, the sacral uh, plexus. So we are going to be talking about the uh, sciatic nerve. So uh, let me go to uh, an image that can help us uh, uh, do that. Let's take away this image and bring this one here. Okay, so this image will help us uh, explain uh, the uh, the sciatic nerve uh, uh, or proper. Now, the the the, the sciatic nerve actually I call the sciatic nerve the eighty-eight percent pride nerve. But I'll tell you why. Okay, the sciatic nerve think he's got gift to the nerve world. <laughs> okay, and understandably, it is. And this is because it's very large. It is two centimeter wide, and it has a personal body guide. It has a personal body guide. Uh, remember the artery to the uh, to the sciatic nerve, the arterial committant nerve is chadisi. Okay, which is a branch from the inferior gluteal uh, artery. Okay, so, so you have its own personal body guard. Okay, now the, the sciatic nerve is actually a continuation of the main part of the sacral plexus. So the sacral plexus, all of them forms, but the, the sciatic nerve is a continuation of uh, of this sacral uh, plexus. Okay, uh, it is um, it is the most lateral structure from the greater sciatic foramen. Remember the greater sciatic foramen. And the lesser sciatic foramen. So, if you can see the piriformis there, uh, the piriformis is the important landmark, while the sciatic nerve comes below the piriformis. Sometimes it can pierce it, sometimes it can come above it, but 
we are not uh, focusing on that now. So now it is important to note that that the the sciatic nerve does not have any gluteal structure it supplies. It doesn't have any gluteal structures. It only supplies starting from the uh, uh, the, the posterior uh, uh, thigh uh, uh, muscle. So now somebody might still be thinking why. The doctor Akuna call the sciatic nerve the 88 percent pride nerve. Now, the sciatic nerve is actually they say the sciatic nerve is the biggest nerve, but actually the sciatic nerve is not only one nerve. The sciatic nerve is actually two nerves that disguise as one, and that is because it is bounded in a loosely in a loose connective tissue sheet. Okay, so we have the tibia nerve. Which is from the anterior division of the anterior rami L4 to L4, and the common fibular nerve, which is from the posterior division of the anterior rami L4 to S2. So you can see that the common fibular nerve, the, the sciatic nerve, is made up of two components of nerve that is tied together as one, making it look very big. Now, why am I calling this a 8% uh, 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 pride nerve? Well, the truth is. Um, in 12% individual, the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve does not allow any loose connective tissue to bound them. They are separate right from one when they leave the greater sciatic foramen. They are, they are separate like that in 12% people. But in 88% people, it is bounded by this loose connective tissue. So when you minus 100 minus 12, when you minus 12 from 100, it will give you a, a, so 88 percent of the time the sciatic nerve is proven to be the largest nerve uh, in the uh, uh, body. Now the the let's just agree it is together. It is the large nerve. Now it divides into two. The tibial nerve we have to move down uh, the posterior compartment of the leg into the foot, while the common fibular nerve will move down into the to the anterior and lateral compartment of the leg into the foot. So let's talk about the, the common fibular nerve. Uh, the common fibular nerve, also known as the common peroneal nerve, uh, is lateral of course and is smaller than the tibia nerve. This is the tibia nerve here. So the, the common is smaller than the tibia nerve and it begins at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa. The popliteal fossa is the uh, depression of the uh, uh, the posterior aspect of uh, uh, the knee. So the it has a superior angle here. It has a superior angle here, and it has an inferior angle here. So what I'm saying there is that uh, the tibia nerve begins at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa and follows closely to the medial border of the bicep femoris and its tendon along the superlateral boundary of the popliteal fossa. So it's called the common fibular nerve or the common peroneal nerve because it winds around the neck of the fibula to pierce the fibularis longus, then give off several branches in the popliteal fossa before it divides into terminal branches that's the superficial and the deep fibular nerve. It has cutaneous branches, okay? It gives cutaneous branches that's the lateral sural cutaneous branch and of course the sural communicating uh, 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 branch. This sural communicating branch we have to anastomose with the sural a branch of the tibial nerve. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, after the tibial and the fibular nerve divides at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa, they join together again inferiorly uh, uh, through the sura communicating branch, which is a branch from the common peroneal or common fibular nerve with the sura nerve, which is from the tibial uh, uh, nerve. Okay, so it also has articular branches, but I wouldn't want to go into that. It has a superior lateral genicular nerve, it has the inferior lateral genicular nerve, it has the recurrent genicular nerve, but let's not talk about that. Then it's important to note that the, 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 uh, the common peroneal or the common fibular nerve gives only one motor branch, and that is the nerve to the short head of the bicep femoris. Okay, it comes directly from uh, the common fibular. Uh, nerve. Now, talking about the tibial nerve, the tibial nerve is medial, as you can see, and it's of course it's the, it's the largest and the most superficial. Even though it is superficial, it does not get uh, uh, injured as easily as uh, 
the uh, common fibula nerve do get injured. Okay, so the 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 popliteal fossa it bisects the fossa uh, as it passes from its superior angle to the inferior angle. Okay, so uh, before giving muscular branches to the soleus muscle and uh, I think uh, the gastrocnemius muscle, the plantaris and the popliteus muscle. Yes, these muscles are muscles of the posterior. Uh, compartment of the leg which we have not got into so I'm just throwing across this net so that when we are going to be talking about the muscles of the anterior compartment uh, the muscles of the, the compartments of the thigh and the leg and I'm referring to this net we, it won't uh, uh, we won't uh, be lost okay now um, the, the tibia nerve also supplies the tibialis posterior muscle the superficial the superior tibiofibular joint the tibia bone the interstitial membrane of the leg and the inferior tibiofibular joint. It also gives medial sura nerve at the middle of the popliteal fossa, which is also which is sensory to the skin of the lower half of the back of the leg and the lateral border of the foot until it gets to the tip of uh, the toe. It also gives three articular branches, which I'm not going to be mentioning now. But the most important thing you need to pick now is that uh, the tibial nerve terminates by dividing into the medial and the lateral plantar nerve. To supply the uh, the uh, uh, to supply the, the food. Okay, so uh, we have come to the end of this class. Uh, in our next class, we are going to be talking about the muscular attachment to the femur, that the anterior compartment, the posterior compartment, and the medial uh, compartment uh, of the thigh. But in the meantime, if you have any question, okay, so you can uh, send me a message, WhatsApp or on, on Telegram, you can even send me email and um, um, I will fix a uh, meeting time for us uh, to meet up on, uh, on, on Zoom. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to send it uh, uh, to me. So we have come to the end of uh, uh, this class. Thank you for downloading and listening. Okay, and please remain safe. God bless you.